This lesson deals with a capacitance example using PSPICE. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 6 starting on page 4. Suppose that I have this voltage across a capacitance whose value is 0.5 microfarads. And then I want to plot the current through the power absorbed and the energy absorbed using PSPICE. Well, this kind of wave shape we haven't seen before, but there is a command in the original SPICE program that allows you to create a waveform by using straight line segments. This is called the PWL, or piecewise linear option, and it can be a voltage or a current source, and just give it pairs of the X and Y axis. So here's my first point, X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2, and then so on. It just connects these up. And then when you stop, the last coordinate you give, it just keeps that value for all time. You can put commas between these if you want to, but SPICE just ignores those. So let's take this command and use it for our example. So again, we need a title, we need a dot end, and then we can describe the schematic. We've got a voltage source from node one to zero, and we had a value of zero seconds, and we had zero volts, and then at two milliseconds, we had 10 volts, and at three milliseconds, we had five volts. And that just stays there for all time. Capacitance is between nodes one and zero and has a value of 0.5 microfarads. The dot probe is a command that gives us a graphing of all variables, although we can restrict that. And then we've got to pick the uh, time axis. Now, since our example is going up to three or four milliseconds, why don't we just go farther than that in time? So let's say go out to 10. So 10 M means 10 milliseconds. And normally I would divide this by 200 data points and pick the print step. This will be the minimum number of points you'll get plotted on the screen and likewise printed. I'm going to do some integration. I'm going to need a little bit more accuracy, and so I'm going to actually do 2,000 points. So dividing this number by 2,000, I get 5 microseconds. I'm going to start graphing at time t equals 0, and then I'm going to pick the ceiling step the same as the print step. For right now, I'm just going to have you do that. I'll explain that in ECE 202 in Chapter 8. Now, if you go to the ECE 201 homepage, you'll find a little handout on how to run the SPICE program. Let's assume that we've run the program and now I'm going to plot right of quantities. The first thing I want to check is, is the voltage across the capacitance what I think it is. So I just ask for the voltage at node 1. And sure enough, here's my graph where I have 0 volts at 0 seconds, I have 10 volts at 2 milliseconds, 5 volts at 3 milliseconds, and then forever that same value. The slope here is the rise over the run, so I've got a change of 10 volts in 2 milliseconds, and so that's 5 kilovolts per second. Here I have a drop of 5 volts in 1 millisecond, so that's a slope of minus 5,000 volts per second, and then of course the slope here is zero. The reason I want to calculate this is I'm going to multiply that by the capacitance and predict the current. For this first slope, I would expect to see that slope of 5,000 volts per second times 0.5 microfarads, and that gives me 2.5 milliamps. And then for the next slope where it's negative, a minus 2.5 milliamps, and then when the slope is 0, 0. So when I ask for the current in the capacitance, Spice gave me this graph. And indeed, it does turn out to be 2.5 milliamps, minus 2.5 milliamps, and then 0. Now in this probe post-process here, we can do algebraic equations. And so we could multiply the voltage across the capacitance times the current entering its plus terminal. The notation in SPICE is that the first node is positive and the second node is negative. This is true for all elements in the SPICE program. You can see here that the power absorbed is positive and then you can see that it's also negative and zero. So what's happening here is that we are putting current into the capacitance and here we're taking the current out. The current reverse directions, the energy that we stored, we're able to take back out again. In fact, let's look at that. Let's take the integral of the power absorbed. And in the probe, this is just the symbol S, and then of the quantity, V1 times I of C. The reason I wanted more data points here is that I want to compare my hand calculations to the measured here. And I was a little bit off when I only did 200 data points. So I'm going to do 2,000 to maybe make that a little bit more precise. Here's the graph of the energy absorbed by the capacitance. You can see it goes up, comes back down, and levels off. Now let's calculate the energy absorbed by our capacitance. We have a formula of 1 half CV squared. Let's just take one point here. It looks kind of easy to read off here. We have 1 half times 0.5 microfarads times 10 volts was the value of the voltage at 2 milliseconds. And that gives me 25 microjoules. And that's exactly what I get here. So we get verification. This would be true at any point in this particular graph. 
Let's talk about some of the properties of capacitance. Now, a resistance dissipates its absorbed power in the form of heat. Capacitance simply stores its absorbed energy and eventually returns it. So if you were to touch the capacitor, it wouldn't feel warm at all. This would be an ideal capacitance. We'll talk about the real one later in the chapter. Now, when capacitance is absorbing power, we saw the current was entering the plus terminal. And when it's generating power, the current's leaving the plus terminal. What I want to do here is what I call a mathematical definition of capacitance. So when one coulomb of charge passes through a capacitance absorbing power, I'm going to say that it gives up this energy in the form of one coulomb of stored charge. And then when one coulomb of charge passes through a capacitance that's generating power, its energy is depleted by one coulomb of the stored charge. I think of this like a train with a coal car, where the coal car is the charge and the coal is the energy. And so as I pass through a depot, I can dump off that coal or pick up some coal. And I kind of think of that as how the charge and the capacitance is giving up its energy or, or taking energy. Let's see if that actually works here. To do that, I need one more property. I just state it here and then we'll prove it. The charge stored on a capacitance is C times V. Current is the change in charge per unit time, but that's also equal to C dV dt. Now capacitance is not a function of time, so let's put this inside here. So comparing this side of the equation on the right with our original on the left, that means that Q is equal to C times V. So you can calculate how much charge is stored in a capacitance by just knowing its capacitance and the value of the voltage. If I were to integrate the current, I would get a plot of charge versus time. Again, we're going to do this in probe with the symbol S, and then we're going to ask for the current of the capacitance. The way to interpret this is that this is a graph of how much charge has passed through the capacitance as a function of time. So here we're putting charge in it, and here we're taking charge out of it. So 2 milliseconds says that I have 5 microcoulombs of charge has passed through our mathematical capacitance. Now if we calculate with our formula above the amount of charge that's stored on a capacitance, then at 2 milliseconds we found that the voltage previously was 10 volts, and so if you multiply 0.5 microfarads times 10 volts, you get 5 microcoulombs. So this is the amount of charge that's stored on the capacitance, but it's also the amount of charge that's passed through the capacitance. Again, in my mathematical sense, it's a little bit different physically. You could also do it at any point along here. If we do it over here, the value of the voltage at this particular point was 5 volts. And again, multiplying that by 0.5 microfarads, you would wind up getting 2.5 microcoulombs, and that's exactly what you have right over here. So we can calculate how much charge is stored on a capacitance by simply taking the capacitance and multiplying by the voltage at that particular instant in time. These are some of the properties of capacitance that we've illustrated by using the piecewise program.